Well, I started into the shooting sports by going to the range with my dad and my brothers. We'd start out with the 22, shoot at paper targets, and we'd have a lot of fun. It was a great family activity and very relaxing. Uh, later, I got into Army cadets, and I became proficient with the Canadian Forces service rifle at the time, the FN C1A1. We also shot number sevens, which were 22 caliber uh, rifles on the old Lee Enfield platform, and we fired the number four Lee Enfields as well. We also used Sport Co's, Anschutz Model uh, 64s, and a few other firearms that the Canadian Forces used from time to time. It was great fun, and those were good days. But I also liked to get out hunting, and I started collecting firearms myself. I built up a pretty good collection over the years, and I've always thought that one day that collection might help to fund my retirement. Unfortunately, that's not the case. What's been happening is that successive rounds of gun control since the 1970s have increasingly made my meager collection in more, less and less of value. It's, it becomes worthless. As people are unable to buy some of the things I bought over the years, as they be, start to become more heavily regulated, classified as prohibited, and then not eligible to be sold. It's a serious problem for people who've invested their lives into the, the firearms community. This election that's coming up is a very significant one for Canadian firearms owners. Mr. Trudeau has said that he intends to ban military-style assault weapons. The fact that he would call them weapons is offensive enough, but what does he mean by military-style? It tells me that he really doesn't have a clue. The one that they often target, the AR-15, uh, designed by Eugene Stoner, was originally marketed as a civilian semi-automatic hunting rifle. The military later uh, decided they liked the platform and design and adapted it for military use. So it was originally designed for civilian sporting use, and the rifle was originally called the AR-15 Sporter when it was built by Colt. But there are many other military-style semi-automatic firearms out there in Canadian hands, and a lot of them aren't restricted. There are SKSs, there are M1 Garands, and a whole host of other rifles which have been brought into the country over many years and are owned and responsibly enjoyed by many Canadians. Now, when I got involved with the National Firearms Association in the mid-80s, I was very, very concerned about legislation that was being talked about that would infringe upon my rights, my privileges, my freedoms as a Canadian firearms owner. And I became increasingly worried about what that would mean for me, my heirs, and those who have yet to enjoy the shooting sports and the, the great relaxation and fun that comes along with them. Now, one of the things that you often hear in uh, these elections is that this is all about public safety. Well, that's simply not true. Nothing about this election has anything whatsoever to do with public safety, except for concealing the ineptitude of this Liberal government in dealing with the perceived problems of crime and violence. They try to do bait and switches. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, it's a mental health issue, when really most people with mental health problems are of no danger to themselves or anyone else. That's simply the reality. What we have in some urban centers is a problem of criminal gang violence. And even that isn't a huge number of people. It's a small number of people committing a large amount of crime. And really what needs to happen is that we need to give the police the resources they need to deal with bad behavior. We do not need more gun control. And I would argue we in fact need a lot less. The onerous firearms control system that's been foisted on us in successive years from the 1970s forward, Bill C-51, the uh, Firearms Act of C-17 of Kim Campbell, uh, Bill C-68 of the Chrétien government, none of these have had anything whatsoever to do with reducing crime rates or attacking violent crime. The Canadian research on this is very clear. And I think that it's really important that firearms owners understand that they want all our firearms eventually. 
they parse it out. They, they try to separate handguns. They'll say that some rifles are scary because they're black or they have military features. But quite frankly, military features are in all firearms. And what does that mean anyway? All it means is that there is something about this that can be used to separate, parse it out, and claim that a particular firearm is perhaps somehow different and thus easily targeted. It sounds like a form of technological bigotry to me. I've taken this very seriously. I've committed a good number of the years of my life to fighting bad firearms control legislation. And I've seen an awful lot of very consistent behavior on the part of those who would take away our firearms. I've gone to the United Nations. I've tried to argue for sensible firearms control and I've called out penny dictators on their terrible antics in trying to destroy the rights and freedoms of the people they govern. Sometimes they listen but often they do not. And now we find ourselves heading into another fall federal election in Canada. A federal election in which we have some choices to make. We have a choice of a Prime Minister who has gone well out of his way to embarrass himself, his country, and its citizens about a range of issues. We've seen scandal after scandal after scandal. It amazes me that there are still people who really believe that the Liberal Party of Canada is somehow the best party to govern this country. Clearly it is not. Any objective uh, observer would agree with me on that. But for a firearms owner in Canada, one of 2.2 million who are licensed, criminally record checked every day, analyzed, scrutinized, and carefully monitored, this election is about our rights and our freedoms. This election is about us being targeted as a group. It doesn't matter if you just own a, a pump shotgun or a bolt action rifle that you make use of to go hunting with from time to time. It doesn't matter that you uh, just go sport shooting and you don't care about hunting. Or it doesn't matter if you're uh, licensed to, to possess a firearm for protection in the woods from animals. Or that you have firearms just because you want them. All of us are at threat from this government and its program of civil disarmament. And it's time that we stood up and we made our concerns known. This fall, we really need to get out and vote. It's very important. And it's really important that we vote our passion. Because if we don't get out and vote and avoid splitting the vote, we are going to lose a lot of rights and privileges that we will not get back, regardless of who's elected next. So think about that. Join and support your local shooting club. Get active with your, your firearms community. And join and support Canada's National Firearms Association. We're working hard for you. I'm working hard for you. And so is our board of directors. We're trying to make a difference. And we need all the help we can get because we cannot do this by ourselves.